Hey everybody, welcome to today's vlog. Today is Thursday, and I'm gonna be hanging out at home just a little bit before I head into the game store. Um, Comcast is coming between two and four to install the internet and the phone and all that. And uh, before then, I have to go to the old office, to Kevin's office, and grab the equipment because I'm just getting the account switched over. And so I have to go there and get that stuff, but he is going to unhook it all for me because I don't want to accidentally take something that is his. No, you're not jumping over there. He has uh, like an like an extra router and stuff set up, so I, I, wanna, I want him to unplug it all to make sure that I don't grab any extra pieces. And uh, he's not going to be in there until like 11, so I still have about an hour till he's even there. And so I'm going to be going in there right before I go to the game store, basically. And... Uh, I got, a pa I got two packages in the mail yesterday that uh, I, th I opened them after I ended the vlog, so I forgot to show them, but um, in a vlog maybe a week ago or so, um, someone commented that they were interested in this Tomb Raider strategy guide that you could see in the background um, that was up in the garage, and uh, I was like, well, because um, he, he had shown interest in, like, sending a couple games as a donation for the game store, and I was like, well, why don't we just trade, and you, you know, I'll send you that guide, and you just send me whatever you were going to send. And so I got the packages, and yesterday, these, these were from Sneaky Mutt, and he sent Dead to Rights 2 for Xbox, and then a sealed copy of Prince of Persia Forgotten Sands for the DS. So very cool. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Um, I like whenever I'm able to turn a donation into a trade. I always try to because sometimes I feel a little bit weird about accepting donations, um, especially for something like this that are not necessarily items that I would be keeping for my collection. So, but thank you so much, I uh, appreciate it. I'm going to send you a message on Facebook. Um, I've been super busy getting the game store ready and everything that, um, I haven't shipped out the, the guide yet, but I have it right here, and I'm going to be packaging it up right now to get it sent out. I apologize for the wait, but uh, yeah, those are that's what I'm doing right now, and I will see you guys in a bit. Abby went to breakfast with her mom, and she was going to bring me like some bacon or something, but she said it wasn't very good, so she got me a banana cream dream. It's a pie shake. It's so good. It's so good. Mmm. A pie shake from Sherry's. Abby and I are headed to the... Abby! <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard that, but she just burped. But we are going to the dump. We have, um... It's like that exercise bike thing. There's a, a broken recliner. And there's just some other crap that we gotta throw away that doesn't fit in our garbage cans. Um, and then we are actually going to Retro Game Trader, which I actually mentioned in yesterday's vlog. It's the biggest game store around the Portland area. They have the biggest inventory and all that. We're actually going there to pick something up for a friend and then I'm gonna be shipping it to him. And it's probably the rarest item that will ever be in my possession <laughs> and probably the most expensive single item as well and it is video game related so the store didn't want to ship it and so he posted and asked if he knew anyone in the area and we live in the area so we're going to be heading out later to get that but that's going to be after i go to the game store and everything because comcast is coming between two to four retro game trader is open until nine so i got to be here for comcast and then after that we'll go we'll go out there and of course we're going to film and show you guys what it is it's going to be Insane. Yeah? Insane in the membrane. Don't move. <laughs> Just pull the whole desk out. No. Oh my god. Watch out, there's spiders in there. 
Watch out, there's one right there. No. <laughs> so we were almost home back from the dump and the truck started making a really scary sound. Um, so it sounded like it was misfiring almost. And so Abby pulled over and called her parents. They came out to look at it and they're probably going to try to take it to this place down the road to get it checked out. And uh, so they actually brought me home because I have to go and you know I have to meet Comcast and everything. So I'm about to head out to go to the office and grab the Comcast uh, router and all that stuff. Then I'm going to the game store to uh, to meet up to you know to be there for Comcast, and then after that, hopefully by that time, Abby and the truck and everything will be taken care of, and she'll be ready to go once I get back. And then we're gonna head out to to uh, Retro Game Trader and buy that ridiculously expensive and awesome item uh, for my friend. And then we're gonna be shipping that out to him probably tomorrow or something, and. Uh, he he's given me a little bit extra for helping him out um so i just planned on using that extra money he sent me to buy something for myself for retro, retro game trader i just mentioned in yesterday or the day before the vlog that i'm really trying to focus on completing my n64 set by next october so i'm going to use that money to hopefully get a bunch of boxes and manuals that i need they usually have a pretty good supply of stuff there so i'm really excited to go and do that but for now, I'm gonna go and grab the box from the office. All right guys, I'm at the game store now. I'm just waiting on Comcast to get here. I have a two hour window of them arriving basically, two to 4 p.m. So I'm gonna be here hanging out for a while. Um, as soon as they are done and as soon as they leave, then I'm gonna head back home, pick up Abby, and we're gonna go to Retro Game Trader. I'm super excited for that, I can't wait. Um, so. Yeah, until then, I'm just probably going to uh, read through the comments from yesterday's vlog, which I have not done yet, and probably work on the, uh, what do you call them, the business cards a little bit more. Um, I get notifications on my phone, so I did see one pop up that said that I misspelled Blu-ray, and I'm going to reply to that comment, of course, here in a minute, but uh, that was actually intentional um, because I was changing around the fonts on the back there that I was using and one of them that I had selected, I don't know if it was the one I ended up using, but one of them that I selected didn't have a hyphen for that font, so it changed it to a different font for the hyphen, and it stood out completely. It looked really weird, so I just took it out. Um, but I'm going to have to check and see if the font that I ended up using has the hyphen, because like I said, I probably changed the font around 20 times to find one I liked, so got to double-check that. But I'm going to go through the comments and then work on those a little bit more. Comcast guy just left. He was very, very cool. He was a retro gamer, so he's going to be coming here once we open. But we got the Comcast internet stuff installed, so we are good there. We got it tested out and everything, of course, and it's working. Um, so I was actually going to head straight home after he left and then go to Retro Game Trader with Abby. However, Abby's mom is leaving tomorrow to go out of town, so we have dinner with them tonight. And so... We're going to eat dinner first and then go to Retro Game Trader. Um, but also, a couple more things. Um, I just happened to open up Facebook Marketplace, which I haven't looked at in quite some time, but couldn't help it. And we're going to pick up two more things tonight as well. Um, one of them we're going to get after Retro Game Trader because it's out in that same area, Beaverton Hillsboro area. So we're going to pick up that after Retro Game Trader, but then the first item I should be picking up before I head home right now. I'm just waiting on the guy to respond. Hopefully he says that he's free now. But uh, both very, very cool things. They're both for the store, although one of them will not be for sale. That is a clue, and that is the item that we're picking up later tonight. So the item that I'm going to get right now is going to be for sale in the store, and I think it's going to be an awesome item to have for the opening day. So... I'm just going to wait on that guy's message and then go pick that up. Hopefully he's available. The guy just got back to me and apparently he has a bunch of video game stuff. So I'm going to take some extra cash with me just in case. Uh, the only thing he told me is that he has a complete in box Conqueror's Bad Fur Day. But um, I'm just going to grab some extra money and see what happens. He's not too far away, so it's only going to take me 10 minutes to get there. Uh, I'm going to stop at an ATM on my way, of course. And, uh, whoa, 
look at that. Where is that? That's a hair, not a beard hair. <laughs> so I'm going to stop and get some cash and head over there. I'm obviously not going to film at his house or anything, but um, of course I will show you guys what I pick up. I'm at least getting the one item and we'll see what else I end up with. Hopefully some cool stuff and then I'll be heading back home for dinner. Just got home from picking up this bundle here. So here's what I went to get. Nice little Pikachu N64 with matching controller. Got a rumble pack, Diddy Kong Racing. It just has a jumper pack in it. Um, and then it also came with Rugrats in Paris, both cables of course, and WWF Warzone. So the extra stuff that I bought after I got there, I got Pokemon Snap, GoldenEye, and then he just gave me these four Game Gear games for free. Clutch Hitter, two copies of Sonic 2, and NFL 95. So he had a bunch of other stuff. He had a Dreamcast, PS1, PS2, PS3, Wii, Wii U, GameCube, Super Nintendo, NES. Like, he had all this stuff. But he didn't want to sell most of it because he's still collecting. So I got what I could. And he's going to talk with his brother tonight about selling me the Conker's Bad Fur Day box and manual. I don't really care about getting the cartridge because they paid way too much for it. They paid 200 bucks for that game. So I told him I'd give him 60 bucks for the box and manual, which I think is a pretty fair offer. And he's going to let me know tomorrow about that. We are heading right now to, out to Retro Game Trader. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. I didn't tell them what we're getting yet. Oh, okay. But all they know is that we're picking up something pretty rare. I don't think that I said what it is. Hopefully not, because now if I did, I just sound like an idiot right now. But it's going to take us probably 40 minutes or so to get there, and we'll do some filming at the store. We've, we've vlogged there before, but um, it's been quite a while. So we'll do some more filming there and show you guys the store and pick up some cool stuff. It's upside down, but <laughs> this is what we're, we came to get. And it's, it's like fully complete, right? As far as I know, that's everything that came with it. All the baggies and all that? Are these, these are the original baggies? These are the original baggies the guy had. I don't know if it had foam or something in here, um, but this is everything, yeah, including the mounting stuff. Awesome. Um, yeah. So yeah, little, I, little, uh, I, I tested this when it came in. A little uh, thumb clip heart monitor. And it, and it worked. It, it was very strange, to say the very <laughs> least. No, no, no. He's not. Sleep. How's it going? <laughs> I'm out here. Maybe in the other box. Oh, yeah, I actually didn't even look through that yet. So I'll see that. Street Fighter, Baseball, Sparkster. Nope, no Alright, here you go. I wish you'd kind of keep them together sometimes, <laughs> but I understand why it doesn't happen. Well, the inventory this large, you don't keep anything. <laughs> I think we need that one. Good manuals in here. Yeah, them's the good ones. All the two dollar manuals are at the house. <laughs> you can sell them to me for like 50 cents each. What's up? We got a bunch of boxes and manuals. I'll show you when we get home. All right, so as you guys saw, we uh, we left Game Shredder there and got the the freaking Outback Joey complete in box with all the accessories and everything. Which um, buying that for a friend. So I'm not keeping that but I'm at least going to film it when we get home. So got that. And then we came to pick up my second deal of the day and it's in the back seat. And I think I'll just wait till we get home to show you guys what it is because I need to plug it in. 
Abby and I got home a little while ago, and Abby was really tired, so she is sleeping for a few hours. She has to wake up early in the morning to take her mom to the airport, and then she's going to, I think, probably stay up from... No, she's going to... I don't know. She has work tomorrow night, so she's going to have to figure out when to sleep, but... We are home now, so I'm going to show you the last item that I picked up uh, tonight, and then we're going to go back over the other stuff as well, but I'm going to have to tr turn off the light for this one so you can get a good shot of it. Here it is, guys. I picked up this neon PS2 sign. Very, very cool. The person I got this from said that they got it from GameStop back in the day. So this was posted on the Facebook Marketplace. And I I wasn't planning on looking, but I did, and I saw it, and it was only priced at 150 which I think was already a pretty good deal, but I offered 120 and they accepted. So I went and picked it up, and this thing is awesome. Um, unfortunately, I don't really have a lot of room for it here in the game room, so it's probably going to be going to the store to be put on display. Not for sale, though, of course. There's the Fire Orange N64 box I got the other day. And then this is the item that we went to get. Heartbeat Personal Trainer for the Sega Genesis with Outback Joey. This is fully complete, even down to the baggies. And this is the rarest thing that will probably ever be in my game room. There's a t-shirt from the store as well. So uh, my, friend, my friend contacted me. Um, well, he posted on Facebook asking if he, if he had any friends in Beaverton, Oregon, and I said, we live pretty close, so he messaged me and asked if I could pick something up for him, and I knew that it was going to be something pretty rare because, you know, why would he shop at a game store that is out of his state, and they didn't want to ship it, which I completely understand, so he asked me to get it, he was able to PayPal me the money for it, and then I was able to use my PayPal debit card to purchase it for him. So uh, I'm going to be packing this up over the weekend at some point and then shipping it out to him on Monday. But this thing is incredibly rare. For anyone who hasn't heard about this before, it hooks up to an exercise bike and you play this dumb Outback Joey game with it. And Outback Joey is considered the rarest Sega Genesis game because this is the only way that it was ever released. And... I think there was only like a thousand that were ever even made. So out of the 1,000 originally, how many do you think are actually still out there? And I think to have them complete in the box like this, there's maybe five or six. So incredibly rare, also extremely expensive. I'm gonna open it up really quick to give you guys a closer look at the insides, just because I'll never have a chance to film this ever again. I did film a little bit of this at the store, but there's, all these baggies and everything, um, all the cables necessary to hook this thing up. Here's the actual unit. The cartridge goes in there. Um, there's all of these little like cable holder things, which look like they're unused. And so I'm sure that those are not easy to find. There's this little weird controller adapter with A and B buttons. Uh, looks like there's a, another one with a, with a joy, not joystick, but a game pad on there. And then so this is where the controllers and stuff plug in, and you can use a regular Genesis controller with this, which is probably recommended, but there's the actual unit, which is just incredibly rare, and here is the game. So as you can see, it doesn't have any artwork, but it does have a manual in the cartridge, of course, and I think that it originally doesn't have any artwork. So here it is, super, super freaking rare. <laughs> Like, the cartridge by itself sells for $3,000. I'm honored to have had the opportunity to be a part of this transaction because this is something that I will never own for myself. It's just, you know, unless I become a millionaire somehow, magically. <laughs> but this is just insane. And like I said, I'm super happy to have been involved in this transaction. Um, not only because I'm, it's, it's cool to be able to help out a friend, but... You know, of course, it's cool to be able to have this in my possession for at least a short amount of time, and I can film it for a vlog like this, and I can take a photo of it for Instagram or whatever I want to do, so very cool. I'm not going to mess with it too much, though. I'm not going to bother hooking it up or anything, because 
I don't want to mess anything up. It would be a very expensive thing to break. So <laughs> I'm going to get it all put back up here after I take a picture for Instagram. And then I'll go move on and show you guys the game or the boxes and manuals that I got for myself. So I'm going to go through these fairly quickly because they're just going to be shown in a pickup video at some point. So first I got three uh, just empty N64 boxes here for my friend Sam. And he is actually coming to visit in October for the retro for the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, and he'll be helping out at the booth and everything. So um, he's going for a complete N64 set, just like I am. And so uh, he knew that I was going to the store, and he said, "Hey, just let me know. You know, send me some pictures of whatever they have after you've picked out what you want, and you know, if there's anything that I'm interested in, can you pick it up for me?" And I, you know, of course. So he actually PayPal'd me for these, and <clears throat> so I picked up for him. These are just a boxes only, no manuals, no cartridges, but Bassmasters 2000, Bio Freaks, and Gex 3, and those came to $14, so, or, yeah, 14 bucks. So he just PayPal'd me for those, and I'll just probably give them to him when he comes to the expo. Then for myself, I got a bunch of empty boxes and manuals. Uh, no cartridges. I mean, technically this one is complete because it's factory sealed, but that is WCW Mayhem factory sealed. It was $19, so couldn't pass that up. Other boxes I got, some of these I already have, but they are condition upgrades. So I guess I'll show those two first. So the condition upgrades, and these are condition upgrades because they still have the plastic on them. Obviously they're opened, but it's just been cut. You know, the plastic was cut at the side, and I really try to get as many games like that as I can. So we have Aiden Chronicles and Perfect Dark. I have a sealed Perfect Dark, but I need an opened one that has plastic on it. Why not? Then I got NHL Blades of Steel 99, WWF Attitude, and Cyber Tiger. Then I got some Super Nintendo boxes. Once again, some of these have the plastic on them. So I got Power Moves, Street Fighter Alpha 2, X-Men Mutant Apocalypse with the plastic on it, Young Merlin with the plastic on it, Wing Commander, The Secret Missions with the plastic on it, and the best one, Syndicate with the plastic on it, which is awesome. And so all of those are box only, but I also got a pretty decent stack of manuals here for both N64 and Super Nintendo. Some of these are for the boxes that I got, and some of them are not. Uh, some of these are also doubles for me, so I plan on just probably throwing them on eBay uh, because they had them priced pretty cheap, so I'll be able to make some, some of my money back from these. So, Fatal Fury 2, Power Moves, X-Men Mutant Apocalypse, Young Merlin, Weapon Lord for Super Nintendo, Aiden Chronicles, the Quick Reference Card for Killer Instinct Gold, WWF Attitude, Rush 2049, the Manual for Syndicate, which is awesome, Final Fight 2. This one is a pretty rare manual, but it's really jacked up. That's R-Type 3 for the Super Nintendo. It's all folded on the front, and then the back is pretty ripped up, but it's there. Donald Duck going Quackers, and another good one, Sparkster. So, some pretty good stuff in there, and uh, I only, you know, I didn't really have to pay much for these. I owe Abby a little bit of money, because she had to cover the remainder, but... Um, in, in exchange for picking up the Outback Joey for my friend, he gave me a little extra money, and so I just thought of that extra money as basically store credit for the store. So I bought this stuff here with a little bit of help from Abby. I'm going to pay her back, uh, but awesome stuff to add to the collection. I love getting, you know, getting boxes with with the plastic still on it, you know, like this X-Men here. You can see the, the H seam. It's not sealed, of course, but whoever owned it originally just cut the plastic right at the end to open it up and get the game out, and it remained like this. And I always try to get as many games like this as I can. I do have quite a few, and my Super Nintendo collections, my Super Nintendo and my N64 collections are growing pretty, pretty well. So, very happy about that. Um, I showed some boxes here that I didn't get manuals for, like the Street Fighter Alpha 2 and the, the Wing Commander Secret Missions. If you guys have manuals for those, please let me know. So I just wanted to talk one more time about the glass case, and I actually wasn't really planning on talking about this in today's vlog because I kind of, you know, it's I'm kind of over it basically, but um, I talked with Abby and I talked with my friend Sam um, in great detail about, about all your guys' suggestions and what I was thinking and all this stuff, and I think that all three of us have agreed that... Um, 
the idea that we have now is probably the best sort of middle ground for the whole thing. So what the plan is, is obviously I'm going to have the glass case. And it's going to be locked overnight because it just adds that extra layer of protection to the store. If someone breaks in, I don't think they're going to waste their time trying to break into another case that is going to be hard to get into for one, but it's going to be too loud and it's going to take too long. So I think that's just a little extra level of protection there. So overnight, when the store is not open, the case will be locked. In the morning when the store opens, I will unlock all the doors to the case but I will not open the doors. They will be unlocked, but they will be physically closed. So when that first customer comes in and you know they're looking and maybe they notice the doors are unlocked and they open them themselves, or maybe they ask, hey, can I see a game? And I'll just say, yeah, the doors are unlocked. Feel free to browse. So the discs are going to have to stay in the cases because I simply just, I don't have the room. But in order to protect myself, any game that's like 15 bucks or above, I'm going to put in the glass cases up front. So I don't price anything at $14, so everything in the, the big glass case is going to be $13 or below because, like I said, I don't, I don't price anything at $14, so it goes $10, $13, $15. So anything $13 or below is going to be in the big glass case, and you guys can handle the games, you can check them out, you can do what you want to do. Don't steal them, of course, but... I think that's going to be just like the best middle ground that I can come up with for now. And maybe at some point in the future, if I'm able to reorganize or, you know, whatever happens and I'm able to get more room somehow, then I will highly consider taking the discs out of the cases and keeping them behind the counter. But with the plans I have for it right now, where I have the TVs and systems up on top that are hooked up, and then below that, maybe more TVs or maybe just storage for like you know, I don't, I don't need to have 10 N64 systems out on the shelf, so I'll have one out, and then I'll have all the extras back there where I can just easily grab them, and extra cables and controllers and stuff like that, so that's my plan. I hope that, you know, obviously I'm not going to be able to please everyone, and you just, that has to be expected, you know, everyone has different opinions and different tastes and different ideas about how things should be done. You're never going to please everyone, so I hope that the solution that I've just presented is a pretty fair middle ground, and hopefully everyone will at least be a little happy with it. Like I said, not going to please everyone, but that's my plan. I think that's going to do it for today's vlog. Abby's already asleep, and I need to get this vlog edited so I can get to sleep, because once again, tomorrow, I have game store stuff to do. So that's going to be it for today. really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please do not forget to smack the like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys again tomorrow.